for CBS. 855-212-4227. You want to react to the moves the Lions made? This is a, I mean, what a day this is in Detroit and Michigan sports. The Lions fire Quinn and Patricia. Michigan gets beat by Penn State. <laughs> Hell's freezing over there for Detroit sports fans. Man, they have not had a lot to cheer about, huh? The Tigers stink. The Lions are inept. The Pistons have hit rock bottom. The Red Wings, who made the playoffs every year, were the worst team in hockey. Horrible sports scene. Michigan State now. Michigan State basketball is probably the best thing they got going for them. 855-212-4227. You want to react to that? You can also. Coming up next, I want to talk about the Steelers and the Ravens. The latest on that and what should happen to that game. And if the Ravens should be punished at all for what their strength and conditioning coach did to get them into this situation. 855-212-4227. If you don't want to call, you can tweet me at the Pony Express. Pony spelled P-O-N-I. It's time for the latest sports update with Erica Herskowitz. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Pirate fans, welcome to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's Platinum Certified U.S. Cellular stores and experience the highest standard of customer service. Call in on the live line at 317-1250. Now, with a complete recap of the game and your phone calls, live from the Pirate Radio Studios, here's your host of the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter, Clip Brock. The Pirates knock off the SMU Mustangs today at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, 52 to 38. A convincing Pirate win, a flawless first half. Pirates uh, made it a little interesting in the second half, but really never in doubt. ECU takes it to SMU today. Mike Houston gets his first signature win as the head coach of the ECU Pirates. They cruise today over the Mustangs to wrap up the 2020 season. ECU goes into 2021 with a two-game win streak. Talk about that. Take your calls, 317-1250. Your thoughts on this game, this season, and look ahead to next season. It's all ahead on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. Get your calls in now, 317-1250. We're back with you after this. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find any of those at U.S. Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond on the call. Chico's Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-price pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling is taking a beating. Guarantee your family's comfort all fall and winter with a new train system. It's hard to stop a train. For a limited time, get a new train system with 0% financing for 60 months. Go to DelcorInc.com for more information. Delcor, the service professionals. See your independent train dealer for details. Call one 888 for details. Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. If you thought you saw the last of Double Cheeseburger Pizza, 
think again, because it's back at Papa John's again with a large double cheeseburger pizza for just 12 bucks. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, order the new double cheeseburger pizza for only $12. The new cheeseburger pizza is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Bush Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer. IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250. We wrap up the 2020 season with a big win. Over SMU, Pirates pull the upset today in big fashion at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, 52 to 38. The final score. We're taking your calls on the Fixed NC live line. We got Coach Rick Smith here as well. What's up, Coach? What's up? You came in in a good mood today, Pirates, with a nice win. That was a nice win. I meant defense played pretty good, but you know we still gave up too many points, but. Dang, our offense. What did they score, 52? 52. Got cooking today. Yeah, man. And we'll uh, we'll get all of Coach Smith's thoughts throughout this program and your thoughts on the Fixed NC Live line. Thomas, hang on. Let's start with Cameron in Greenville. Hey, Cameron. What's up, Clip? How about them Pirates? What a win for this team and this program. That first half of football was the best half of football I've seen East Carolina play since I'll say probably the second half of the UNC game in 2014. It was absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't believe my eyes watching it. We were slaying the ball all over the field. Our defense was playing amazing. SMU was just shocked. Like we were just slaughtering them. Somebody needs to call PETA because the ponies got slaughtered in the first half at Dowdy Pickle Stadium. Um, I'm so proud of this team. Um, as someone I know said it best, a Ugly win beats a pretty loss, and I think East Carolina has a program this past year and the year before. We've had some pretty losses, um, and we haven't had any wins, uh, but it feels good to finally get a win. Uh, the first, If we would have kept the thing going for the first half, it would have been a pretty win, but the second half kind of got ugly there, and it got a little bit worried, but we found a way to stay with it. Um, the second half was ugly, but we won. So I, I, Thank goodness we won. Uh, I'm so proud of this team. Um, I was worried about there was at times where I was worried and concerned, but I, I still believe Mike Houston is the man to do it. And anybody that says any different, should just look. I could, the thing that stood out to me the most this year was how many true freshmen and true sophomores we played on the defensive side of the ball and even the offensive side of the ball. But the defense has really impressed me this year because of all the young guys we have on the field uh, playing. And what, what are we, the third youngest team in the country and returning players? And it's just amazing. It's senior day, but yet none of the seniors even played out there because we were such a young team. That just shows you where we're going as a program, and I can't wait for next season. If I could build a time machine and hop in it until next fall, I would do it. Uh, but then I'm, you never know. East Carolina basketball might be good this year. Who knows? But I'm so proud of this team, the way we played. Uh, we Hey, hey a, posit- a false positive COVID test against Navy, we might win that game. You know, Tulsa, we should have won. We could have had a winning record here. And if you had Norfolk State in there, if, as an FCS team we played, that might have been six wins. So you never know. Who knows what would happen if it wasn't 2020. But our program is heading in the right direction. Mike Houston is the guy, and I cannot wait for next season, guys. I don't know about you all. I'm so excited for all the young guys we have in this program, and I'm just I'm just ready for next year. Uh, what, a, what a way to cap off the end of the season with a, a marquee win. That's Houston's best win here at East Carolina. That's one of the best wins we've had in East Carolina in a long, long time. I would say – the last thing like that was probably 2016 against NC State. That is the best win we've had at East Carolina in a long time. SMU is a dang good football team. Uh, but I'm so proud of the Pirates. Let's get ready for next year, baby, because East Carolina's coming. Go Pirates. 
and I'll see y'all guys next week. All right, there is Cameron. Thanks for giving us a call, Cameron. And uh, I was not too disappointed that ECU didn't schedule a game for next week or December 12th going into this game. Now I wish they would have. I want to see this team play again, Coach. (laughs) Yeah, I'd like to see them play again, too. Uh, You know, we just, uh, again, Donnie Kirkpatrick, offensive coordinator, just a great game plan. Our offense, you know, we just hadn't played that well in a long, long time. I meant – just a great game plan. The kids went out and executed uh, really well. I mean, this is a good team. Uh, SMU is a good team. I mean, you don't win seven games without being a real good football team. And of course, we didn't turn it over. I don't think. We no. Did. Yeah. Well, at the end of the game, actually, well, they did. Yeah. But I mean, if it you, was kind of in doubt at that point. But if you don't turn it over, you know, you got a chance. We talked about that last week. Yeah. And, uh, but they did win the turnover battle yeah, because they were able to pick off a couple. Yeah, so. we got a couple of turnovers. And, you know, you, every time you get a turnover, your defense gets a turnover, you give your offense another chance to go down and score, and you take a chance away from them. So it, that, that was very positive. 317-1250. Thomas is up next in Raleigh. Hey, Thomas. Hey, fellas. How about those Pirates? Decided to call in and go to celebrate a victory. Thank God for technology. I'm with my wife driving back from Nashville, Tennessee, not North Carolina. But uh, glad I was able to sit here and watch it on my ESPN app and stop and get some barbecue here in Shelby, some good Lexington-style barbecue. But uh, the progress is there. I think the Pirates, people just got to stick with them. We're rounding that corner. We're young. We got the coach we need. My message to Pirate Nation is, Y'all get out and support them. Quit staying at home. Get your season tickets. Make your donations. Because when we're back, you better be ready. And you better be on the train. So I'm just excited we can end this season with the win. You know, and look forward to next year. I agree with Cameron. I wish I could hop in a time machine and be ready for a game next Saturday. But uh, we got the flags flying. And we're heading back to Raleigh. And... Let's just keep supporting this team. That's the biggest thing we need is Pirate Nation to come back out like we used to. And uh, we can continue to move this forward because the D is looking the best it's been in a long time. And the offense is going to be there, especially to keep playing like today. And just want to give it up to the boys. And I hope they have a good winner's dinner tomorrow. Coach Houston, you make sure you feed them good. And we'll see you all next year. And I really appreciate what you guys do at Pirate Radio. All right, Thomas fired up after this victory. Thanks for giving us a call while you're on the road, Thomas, and tuning us in. You can find us, of course, on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and also online, PR927FM.com, if you're not in our listening area. All right, 317-1250. Johnny's up next in Emerald Isle. Hey, Johnny. Clip, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Man, where has that been? I know Coach. It besides you was happy that secondary today. Yeah, they, man, we look really good. You ain't did. gonna do that in our house. We were eleven point underdogs. No, no, sir, we're not. I'm telling you what, I agree with the coach. Coach Houston is gonna turn this program around. And I, I was today reminded me of the, the glory days. And so I'm just so proud of those guys. But. uh we let our foot off the gas pedal there at the end a little bit. But uh, anyway, Pirate Radio rocks. I love y'all. And uh, y'all have the best coverage. You better give my girl Shirley a raise. And y'all have a good night. <laughs> All right. There he is, uh, Johnny and Emerald Isle. Come on, guys. All right. One more before we take a timeout. Kenny is up in Blunt Creek. Hey, Kenny. Hey, Clip. Coach, uh, no negatives today. What a great, great day of football at uh, the stadium. The, the team looked awesome. Defense flew around, made plays. Offense was uh, hitting on all cylinders there a couple times. And uh, just a, the only negative, there was one negative. I, I'm going to have to soak my shoulder from all the high fives I was throwing during the game today. And uh, that's a good thing. But uh, thank you all for everything you do. Good way to end the season because next season starts today. As soon as that game's over, they start building for next year. And uh, hopefully we get back into the stadium. We get back out of our tailgating with Pirate Radio. And uh, thank you for everything you do. 
And one thing else, everybody put your $50 and get you a cutout into the uh, Ninjas for the basketball team. We need to raise some money for this program. Go Pirates. Go Pirate Radio. All right. Thank you, Kenny. A win today might help out with that a little bit as people will be more inclined to go ahead and get ready for season tickets next year and uh, donate money and, and feeling good about the program and the way it's going. You know, one thing that he just mentioned that made me think of something, he was talking about how young we are. You realize that the team that we played today out of the starting 22, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, 16 of those kids were seniors on SMU's team, and our young kids went out there and kicked their butt. So, you know, and again, SMU won, had won seven games coming into this thing, and you, like we said a while ago, you know, you don't win seven games without being a pretty good football team. So uh, hats off to the coaching staff and the kids for basically kicking their butt. Their only losses going into this one were Cincinnati and Tulsa, and yeah. we know how good they are. Too. So uh, we beat it. We beat a good football team today. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Kyle is up next. We'll take a timeout. Uh, or you want to get to Kyle? All right, we won't make Kyle wait this time. Kyle in the Grange. What's up, Kyle? What's going on, guys? This is COVID, Kyle. And, uh, now, um, <laughs> proud of the way we played today. Um, Holton, uh, Holton, you know. <laughs> Probably, you know, the best first half I've seen him play, you know, all year. Or the best half of football I've seen him play all year, maybe uh, with the exception of the Tulsa game. Uh, Sneed, what more can you say? The kid's just, you know, a machine. Does everything you ask him to do. Um, and the second half, obviously, third quarter a little rough. Defense stepped up in the fourth. Those interceptions there by, um, I'm terrible with names, guys. The guy who had the last two interceptions. Uh, McMillan? Yes, yes, McMillan, thank you. Uh, huge, huge plays. I mean, you know, those, those sealed the ball game. You know, we, we, we got to learn how to win. Uh, obviously, the, the the punt by Keaton Mitchell or the muffed punt by Keaton Mitchell um, and then the uh, the fumble on the um, on the reverse are just guys that don't know what to do in those situations, nervous, too much nerves. But a uh, heck of a win, best win we've had. I mean, you, you look back maybe – 2015 against Virginia Tech, maybe arguably in 2016, but I really believe this is probably our best win since 2014. Um, and and if, you, if you get the Tulsa win, which we should have, we're sitting here with four wins, and we're probably playing an uh, FCS opponent or somebody next weekend to get to 500 and 5 and 5. So uh, that's how close we were to, uh, to to getting to 500 in a bowl game, most likely. Um, but proud of the team and. Uh, a lot of, lot of positive momentum going next year. Go hard. All right, Kyle. Appreciate you tuning in and giving us a call today. Kyle in the Greens. 317-1250. We'll take a timeout. We got David in Greenville coming up next. And we have your calls. We have open lines. 317-1250. We'll be back with the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show after this. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store, locally owned and operated, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams from my friends at the Auto Store Group. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. And remember, every purchase comes with a free bucket of fun. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store, and Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Go Pirates! 
here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke. Everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just five ninety nine dollars each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand toss pizza and the marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, go! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's, too, where you can... Mix and match two or more. 5 each at Domino's. Two item minimum. Pan pizza, bone and wings, and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1 800 682 6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call in show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, let's run down some of the finals from earlier today. Indiana picked up a win over Maryland 27-11. Florida beat Kentucky 34-10. Missouri shut out Vanderbilt 41 to nothing. but Vanderbilt did make history today as the first woman football player kicked off for Vanderbilt, and she is the first female football player to uh, participate in a P5 game. So congratulations to Sarah Fuller. Other games uh, that went to final uh, earlier today, Penn State beat Michigan 27-17. NC State hangs on to beat Syracuse 36-29. And Oklahoma State beat Texas Tech 50-44. Games going on right now. Coastal Carolina has a 14-7 lead over Texas State in the second quarter. Northwestern trails Michigan State 7-0 in the first. Clemson has a 7-0 lead over Pittsburgh. And uh, App State has jumped out to a 14-0 lead over Troy in the first quarter. Auburn and Alabama are scoreless. College basketball games going on right now. Duke just beat Coppin State 81-71. UAB has gone into the locker room at halftime with a 43-17 lead over Southeast Louisiana. St. Louis has a 38-28 lead over LSU at the half. And Navy has gone into the locker room with a one-point lead over Mount St. Mary, 32-31 at halftime. And that is a look at your scoreboard. Now let's head back in to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Clip Rock. All righty. Welcome back to the show. Phil on Twitter asks, when's the last time we finished the season with not just one, but two wins? Uh, and you got to go all the way back to when Rick Smith was coaching in 2007 to find that the Pirates beat Tulane, went on to win the Hawaii Bowl against Boise State. It has been a while, uh, but the Pirates end 2020 with two straight W's as they uh, head off into 2021. 317-1250, the number. We have uh, three open lines if you want to jump in and let your voice be heard. And we have David in Greenville up right now. Hey, David. Hey, guys. How is everybody doing today? All right. Doing good. Good. You, you, we can confidently say that. And I know you're not going to say, yeah, we're doing great today. Oh, yeah, uh, anyways. yeah. <laughs> hey, look, how many games have we played this year? Is it nine or ten? Nine. Nine games. We should have won two of them. I think that if UCF can claim national championships, we should be able to claim five and four uh, for this year. All right. Uh, roll that train, uh, the Houston train for next year, and see what happens next year. Go Pirates. All right, hang the banner. Winning season in 2020, according to David in Greenville. 317-1250, we have open lines. Coach, I want to ask you something I heard uh, 
during the broadcast the announcers said some head scratching things but they also said something that i wanted to ask you about pirates are up what 45 to 7 at halftime i believe the score was and they said you know that's tough to 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 tell your kids that this is still a ball game and we still got to go out there and play how about that from your experience when you're dominating the team at halftime the game's basically over but you still got 30 minutes left to go is it tough to to get that mindset into the players yeah sometimes you know and you you try to you try to teach them from day one even during spring during the fall you know every week you constantly tell them you got to take the field as a defensive player as a defensive unit it's a tie ball game you know you can't you just can't relax because again you know it's just like when you you give up 21 points in a quarter i mean they were coming back yeah pirates kind of slept walk through that yeah, third. third quarter was ugly and smu though was playing against dcu and the clock at that point and i mean they got within 14 with uh what 12 minutes to go yeah, well, yeah, they they had an opportunity there to uh, to get back in and in the fourth, and ECU helped them out with that, yeah. with a few miscues. But so it, I, I would imagine that uh, it is tough to to kind of get that into the players' heads, especially with the uh, SMU started sixteen fourth or fifth year seniors today, and out of those seniors, five of them were graduates. They were in their fifth or sixth year of college, and we're running our freshmen and juniors and sophomores out there yep. so you know smu very mature older football team against our kids and you know they tried to make a run in the third quarter and we hung on we came back and outplayed them in the fourth quarter ecu's not used to winning a lot of basketball games yesterday the pirates had the lead the whole second half and things got a little hairy down the stretch because the pirates weren't used to playing with the lead like yeah. that you don't know what to do <laughs> you could say the same about the football team yeah. right you, you got to know how to play with the lead yeah, and you just you got to go out there with a the mindset that it's a tie ball game, and if you're an offense, you got to make first downs and try to score touchdowns, and if you're a defense, you got to stop them. I mean, uh, you can get your butt beat in a hurry if you're not ready to play. Coach, uh, once again, you, you walked in, and just like a defensive coach, you said, "Well, defense gave up some plays." <laughs> Never had <laughs> great first half, second half SMU, and you knew they'd get rolling a little bit, and. Yeah. And they finally did there in the second half. But overall, uh, what did you think of the performance from, from the defensive side of the ball today? Well, I thought they played when they had to. Gave up some big plays early. But, you know, the offense just did so well. I mean, Donnie Kirkpatrick called a great game. But yeah. SMU's defense never figured out what the hell was coming next. I mean, and you know, if you're a defense, sometimes you will relax. you got a young defense, they take the field, they're up by 21 points, they're up by 28 points, and then all of a sudden, they're up by 14. I was worried then that the defense may panic, you know, and give up a big one. And now it's a seven-point game. Offense gets tight. Yeah. But you know, we came back the fourth quarter and got the lead back. I mean, a big lead back, and I think SMU just kind of put it on the shelf that we're going to lose this one. From your experience, going into a uh, the end of the year with a win, how much can something like that carry over, especially with a young team like you're talking about with everybody coming back? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable what it's going to do for our football team, you know, in the off season, uh, Didn't we win the last two? Two in a row to so end we, of the year. We won two in a row to end the year. And defensively, we get nine of those 11 starters back. And on offense, I believe we get seven of those starters back. And again, it's, seniors can come back next year. Yeah. Because of, oh. uh, yeah. So, okay, so, but you've got, I think Chris Willis on the defensive line is not going to come back. And Deontay Smith, who is your, uh, your tackle, yeah, is not going to come back. Tackle. But outside of that, you're pretty much going to have everybody back across yeah. the board. And if if they've graduated, I, th- I, th- I could be wrong on this, but I think if you're graduated, you only have to take two classes to be eligible, so they only have to take six hours. Uh, 
I mean, it would be like a vacation for those kids, you know, just like an NFL player. You have a a couple pros on the roster. Show up for the meetings and go to practice, you know, (laughs) and take two classes online. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, You got some pros on the the squad at that point. All right, uh, 317-1250, a lot more to go with Coach Rick Smith. We'll take a timeout. Now's the time for you to call if you want to talk about this game and this season as a whole 317-1250 we have open lines we'll get back to your calls after this at tiebreakers we pride ourselves on serving big and juicy wings i'm talking big and juicy our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens faces if our chickens played football they'd be linebackers the competition's chickens they'd be skinny little kickers trade those kickers in for linebackers tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m follow tiebreakers on facebook and instagram for daily updates Hey Pirate fans, this is Head Coach Mike Houston. The physicians at Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center have been taking care of our athletes here at East Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or if it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care, physical therapy, and diagnostic testing. For experienced and professional services, call the folks who have been taking care of me and many of our fans in Pirate Nation or visit them online at orthopedicseast.com. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown & Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal, to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown & Wood, get an all-new 2020 Cadillac Escalade and save over $18,000 off. As always, Brown & Wood is the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250 and 685 Four two equal housing lender. Ahoy, ladies! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirates Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirates Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in Newburn is now open. Pirates Cove in Newburn is offering Fast Passes for nine ninety nine for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East Tenth Street. And have you heard? Pirates Cove on Fire Tower Road is now offering interior cleaning. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. Hi, this is Scott Muller with Clean Eats. Carol and I would like to personally thank all of you for supporting Clean Eats so well through these tough times. We are blessed to have such a great community helping us weather the storm. If you're having trouble consistently eating healthy, go to cleanies.com and click on meal plans and give our tasty and affordable meals a try. Or stop by the cafe for lunch and let us show you just how simple and easy it is to get started and stay on track. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. This is Marcus Crandall, former ECU Pirate and Grey Cup champion. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. Alrighty, 317-1250 on the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Call-In Show. Pirates victorious today. To wrap up the 2020 season, 52-38. to Big win for Mike Houston and the Pirates. And we are putting up quotes from Mike Houston's postgame right now on our social media sites, including Twitter. And I just saw a quote. 
Uh, how about this one, Coach Smith? Mike Houston said, the biggest thing I need is for everyone to just leave us the hell alone for a few years and let us grow. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like that quote? Well, Leave us alone, let us grow. Unfortunately, he has to play. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that ain't, that, that ain't going to happen. Uh, you can bother us here on the fifth quarter, though, and give us a call and tell us what you think about the game and the season today as the Pirates uh, put the beat down on SMU. Got a little closer there at the end of the game, but the Pirates really in control throughout. All right, we have a few open lines if you want to jump in. 317-1250, and we have Phil up in Greenville. Hey, Phil. Hey. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I knew they were going to win today, and I hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. All right. Thank you, Phil. You do the same. He knew they were going to win. I wish you'd have told me that uh, before the game. I could have won some money, Phil. Next time you know something's going to happen, let me know beforehand. And uh, Merry Christmas to you and yours as well. Coach, uh, you're going over the uh, the numbers there, and Again, kind of a a bit of a tale of two halves because it was just so one-sided there in the first half. SMU didn't get anything going there until the second half. Well, you know, the first the first six times uh, East Carolina's offense took the field, they scored six touchdowns. So they had a 10-play, 80-yard drive, three plays, 34 yards, eight plays, 75 yards, three plays, 42 yards, seven plays, 55 yards, five plays, 80 yards, six plays, and a field goal. So, you know, you score a touchdown the first six series of the game, then you kick a field goal for the seventh. Uh, Now, the second half we didn't do as well. Third quarter – Six place punt, three place punt, three place punt, and then starting of the fourth quarter, we go six plays, uh, you know, sixty something yards and score a touchdown. The twelfth series, we go six plays, kick a field goal, and then our only turnover was the thirteenth series, you know, with four plays and we fumble the football. Uh, but just started out unbelievable when you you know you take the field six times as an offense and you score six touchdowns uh, it's hard to overcome that and the defense was you know the first series we took the field as a defense we forced four plays in a punt second series was a fourth down stop on the fourth play of the series then the third series the defense took the field wasn't good you know they had 10 plays for 75 yards and a touchdown uh fourth series of the game was six plays and we got a fumble and then three plays and they punted three plays they punt six plays they punt then they had a 14 play 80 yard drive eight play uh 60 yard drive for a touchdown and then a field goal so that third quarter they scored two touchdowns and a field goal to make it interesting and fourth quarter i six uh, six plays and a touchdown. But anyway, uh, it was out of it was basically the game, in my opinion, was was out of was out of reach by the half. Yeah, and we've seen these games on the flip side where ECU has been pretty much out of it at half, and then they put together some points in the second half and we're like well does, does that even matter it's kind of empty points yeah. empty yards you know yeah, it's good other, to be on this side of one of those yeah. the other team just kind of relaxes uh uh for coach houston he's got to be and the staff they got to be very excited two wins in a row you know to finish up the year you start off the of course i'm not sure what's going to happen with school in january are they going to be back here in school for classes apparently they're going to be gone for uh, i think six or seven weeks and they're back for you yeah. know the winter workouts and everything so that's you know uh you know i won't be glad when they come up with this uh serum or yeah so everybody can get a vaccine yeah because this is going to be a huge off season right for mike houston to to build these young guys up and uh and another thing too and we'll, we'll talk to brian bailey at, at some point during the post game he said something uh, on the pregame show coach he said that last year donnie kirkpatrick told him he kind of knew that his guys just they weren't ready for the finale they were kind of just going through the motions at practice and walkthroughs and everything like that and this year it felt a little different and you know as a coach right that 
when you have a good week and when you have a bad week, when your guys are ready, when your guys are not ready, it sounds like uh, the guys were ready today and were 100% focused on this game. Well, they played like it, especially, like I said, you know, you go down. How many times does a team score the first six times they have the football? You know, touchdowns, six touchdowns, six drives, six touchdowns, and then a field goal against a team that's seven and two, and right. you're, you've won two games, You and for six years you haven't beat anybody that has a winning record. You know, and you, you beat a team today that had seven wins. So. SMU had to be a little shell-shocked, weren't they? I would think so. They weren't expecting that, no. I know. Uh, right out of the gate from the Pirates today. 317-1250. Let's uh, get a timeout in. We'll come back. If you want to jump in, now's your chance to do so. 317-1250. Give us a call here on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. We are back with you after this. Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before I was just your average football fan, but thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on to victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, especially for formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi is the premier football-watching beverage. I used to care when Mike cheered so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm so in the zone, even Mike can't ruin my football party. (sighs) See? Don't even care. So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football-watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Did you know your small change can make a difference? The next time you visit McDonald's, please consider rounding up for the Ronald McDonald House. Your change adds up and can help many folks in eastern North Carolina. Just $10 can provide a free night stay for families with sick children here in eastern North Carolina and across the state. Just ask your cashier at checkout or choose to round up for RMHC when ordering through the McDonald's app. Thank you for visiting your local McDonald's owned by Dixon Foods and for your support of the Ronald McDonald House of East. Eastern North Carolina. Enjoy the warm air, circulating moments after you turn up the heat. Precise control of cooking temperatures. Enough hot water on demand for everyone's shower. The instant glow of warmth when you turn on your fireplace or fire pit. Never having to change a gas tank on your outdoor grill. Experience the affordable luxury of natural gas. Find out more at GUC.com. Hi, this is Morgan Aylers, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. 
All right, back with you on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show, celebratory edition of the program as ECU knocks off SMU. Mike Houston's first big win, first signature win as head coach of the Pirates, 52-38. Pirates, two-game winning streak heading in to 2021. Got Coach Rick Smith here. If you have a question for Coach Smith, give us a call, 317-1250. Bill, leaving the game. We'll get to you in a moment. Uh, Pirate Owl's got to be feeling good after a Pirate basketball win yesterday and a Pirate beatdown today over SMU. Pirate Owl, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm a happy man, Clip. Happy <laughs> man. Um Coach Smith, what I want to talk to you about, a couple things about the defensive backs. It's nice to see uh, McMillan, number 21, get a couple picks. Uh, and But the one kid I want to talk to you about, and I thought he absolutely played like a, a warrior today, was uh, Jawan Powell. I mean, I think he, they, he had to stop the game four times to get him off the field because he got hurt. But, I mean, the kid was laying the lumber everywhere on the field. And I'll tell you, I think one of the biggest plays of the game was we're up 7 nothing there in the first quarter, and they went forward on fourth and one. And he zipped right through the hole and, and, and took, took out the, run, the, the uh, running back's legs. Held him fourth and one. We got the ball back and scored again. I just want, if you would, talk about Jawan Powell, please. Well, uh, he was a senior in high school uh, out of Georgia, uh, south of uh, Atlanta. They actually sent me down to meet with the kid. You know, it was my last year coaching. Great kid, great mom. Uh, you know, and he was he was a big hitter in high school. Uh, that was a hell of a play, and he's a special kid. Uh, and there were some other schools after him. Matter of fact, the day I was down there, there were a couple of coaches, I got there first, so I got to meet with him first. And then, uh, you know, some other schools met with him, and we set up, the, when I was in there, we set up a visit with him. And uh, just a good kid, came up the hard way, you know, the, Great player at his high school. Pirate out. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just happy we got so many freshmen, sophomores out there on the field. The future's bright, and this really gives us a lot of momentum going into the off season, going into 2021. So. Good Pirates. Yes, sir. Pirate out. Good to hear from you, man. 317-1250. And, uh, Coach, you always talk about, you know, gap integrity and, and every everybody's responsible for a gap. And when that hole opens up, somebody's got to come shooting in. And usually it's a linebacker. This time it was a safety. That was a pretty play great, he made there. Great hit. And, you know, I used to try to explain to my kids, you know, that tailback is five yards deep and he's offset, you know, behind the guard away from the shotgun quarterback. And I'd say, now he's got to get to this A gap on your side of the formation. He's got to run 12 yards. You're 12 yards deep. So if you take one step back and you read what I'm teaching you to read, you'll make the hit for a one yard gain. It's second down and nine. Of course, they look at me like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's simple math. Simple yeah. math. Yeah. All right, 317-1250. Let's go to Bill leaving the game. Hey, Bill. Yeah, hey, I'm uh, I'm hopeful that the game today will maybe bring some Pirate fans back next year and put some more butts in the seats. But I, I did have a, a quick question, uh, an ex- like an explanation on the uh, pass in the end zone that we thought we'd recover the fumble. They ruled an incomplete pass. That can not, not be intentional grounding. Well, I didn't even think it was a, a pass. I thought it was a, a complete fumble. I thought the officials, surely when they looked at it, they would just rule that a fumble, our football touchdown. But uh, I thought they blew that call completely. Bill, can you turn your radio down, too, while we got you here? Yeah, yeah turn it down. Yeah. yeah, well, that's kind of what we thought. You know, when we watched it, that it was a fumble, but... It looked like the kid may have shoveled it forward just a little bit, but there certainly was no receiver anywhere near the uh, play. He didn't get it to the line of scrimmage, and it was not outside the tackle box. So uh, intentional grounding in the end zone is a safety. Yeah. It looks like they blew the call every way they could. They did. <laughs> well, we had to have one more blown call, or at least one more, uh, before we ended this year, Bill. So they got us one there. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, listen, thanks for taking the call. All right, man. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. There's uh, Bill leaving the game, 317-1250. Let's go to Bryce in Kill Devil Hills. Hey, Bryce. Hey, guys. Good afternoon, Coach uh, Cliff uh, and all my, all of our fe- fellow uh, Washington and ECU fans out there. It has been a pretty uh, good week. Um, 
great day today. Uh, I don't know how much I can add to what everybody else said, uh, other than, you know, you have the, uh, the, the, the ifs and maybes of this year, and one more win, and with such a weird COVID year, who knows, maybe another one would have got us to, to a bowl game that, need, that needed somebody. I mean, I don't know, but, uh, you know, I keep forgetting that, that stat, I think a lot of people do, and don't listen, uh, about us being the third youngest team in the FBS. And, uh, and Coach Smith, I thought that was a great point you made about all the seniors on an SMU team that was ranked 19th just a couple weeks ago. Well, so, yeah. you know, that's some, that's some encouraging stuff. When I was coaching, that was one of the first things I looked at. And when I went in Sunday, got through grading, you know, the defense, I would look at the opposing team that we were going to play the next year. And I'd always try to – I wanted to know how many seniors they had on their offense because I was, of course, the defense coordinator. And, you know, you, you don't – you, you don't like playing an offense that lines up with five seniors, you know, on the offensive line if you're on defense. Uh, now, these their offensive line had three seniors on there and a couple of juniors, so their offensive line was very mature, had been to war, you know, for at least uh, three or four years. And, you know, we're pretty young on defense, but I, th- I thought that our kids really handled that well. Uh, our guys were ready to play today, and I don't think SMU – they got hit in the mouth and they didn't know what to do. Yeah, well, hey, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you guys, uh, and Coach Smith. Thanks for coming on this year so much, and, and everybody else that did. I, I appreciate it. You know, I've been all over the place, and sometimes I've actually been in places without cell phone range because I was filming. So, but it's been great to be able to catch up with you guys. And I'd like to leave with this question: Do we have anybody that decided to, is has said, "Hey, you know what? Because of COVID, and because this year doesn't count that." We're going to go ahead and stay and stay another year and try this for one more year. Well, yeah, go Pirates. Okay, all right, and let me uh, pull up a tweet earlier from Stephen Igo. He uh, he uh, talked about something with that before the game. Uh, real quick, Coach, to use the line from you, our fourth graders beat up their seventh graders today, right? Yes. I remember you talking about that in uh, in shows past that uh, you think about it, then the year difference and everything. But our our guys got the better of them today. That's for sure. Uh, Igo had put out earlier the players that were honored on Senior Day that would not be returning because, again, you, you get your your classification back next year. If you're a freshman, you're a freshman next year. Sophomore, sophomore, so on and so forth. So let me pull those names uh, real quick. I think most notably on that list was Chris Willis, uh, the transfer defensive end who is likely – I guess going to to go play professional or uh, or who knows maybe uh, be a, a grad transfer, I don't know. But uh, here was the list of names I go gave. He said ECU honoring the following players pregame who will be playing their final game today: Trace Christian, Robert Hill, Caden Norman, Deontay Smith. Deontay's going to the Senior Bowl. He's going to uh, try to play professional football. Uh, Michael Tilly. Honore Varner and Chris Willis. Now, if your name's not on that list and you're a senior, to me that means that you're gonna come back, come back to ECU or or go play somewhere else. Now, uh, I think those meetings are going to be had in January because again, coach, this is a year like any other where not only do you get all your underclassmen back and your 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 transfers and your recruits, you also get these seniors back if you yeah. want them and you got a spot for them. And so. if, if they want to come back. Right. So, yeah. the, so, you know, those discussions have to be had on both sides. You know, when the NCAA made this a no-count year as a staff, you know, they didn't change the number of scholarships you can have. So you can still only have 85 scholarships. Well, let's say that you, you've you been going out there recruiting, say you got 15 seniors. So you were going to sign 15 freshmen. Let's say all 15 seniors decide to stay. You can't sign a soul. Yeah, and and I don't know so, I mean, how those conversations I mean, are going to work. Yeah, it seems to me like that if the NCAA was going going to allow that rule, then for that one year, those seniors that decide to stay, they don't count in your eighty five. And you know I, I mean, I think that might be the case. I mean, it's got to be something yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I think that is the case. And again, or, or you couldn't sign anybody. That comes down <laughs> also to you got to fa- factor in like the the money aspect of it and how many scholarships do yeah. you have above the eighty five that you're willing to give. And, yeah. and so, it's uh, there's a lot of decisions to be made. 
after this final game today. All right, 317-1250. Mike is up in Wilmington. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. Hey, you know, just touching quickly on your point, which wasn't what I was calling for, but you're right. I think Houston has a lot of a lot of decisions to make, and I think most coaches do now when you're looking at these kids that are going to have scholarships extended for a year. And, and you know, last week I would have told you, eh, you know, Holton, but now this week you say, I Holton's great. Anyway, that's not my point, but I, I agree with this. Here's, here's my point, and I, and I want to go to coach with this. And we won, and I'm not trying to throw a blanket over a fire that we won, but I want to talk about clock management. Because clock management last week bothered me with Temple with 17 seconds left. We're snapping the football. And even today, we're, we're winning and we're snapping the football when we had 17, 18, 20 seconds left. It just seemed to me like our clock management, and I know this is really picking, but we should have done a better job of clock management, I think, in the, especially the late third, early fourth quarter. And that little reverse that, that – we fumble on when we should be handing it off. I know it's small. I know we won. I just want to get Coach Smith's point on this, or at least this aspect of what do you think? Like, should, do you think we're not our, our clock management should be better, or should it not be? Are we where we should be, or we should not be? And I'll hang up and listen. But I just think we should be better off with our clock management. And I'll hang up, guys. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Mike. Well, as far as clock management, I mean, I can tell you right now. As a defensive coach and you're up and your offense is snapping the ball with 20 seconds left on the clock, I'm on the sidelines and I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I mean, I'm, I'm with you on that. Let's, let's run it down. Let's snap it with two seconds on the clock. And you do that three or four times in a row, you've just cut a minute and a half you know, off the game. So, yeah, clock management could be better. I don't know if the offensive coaches felt like that the lead was so big, you know, the heck with the clock and and uh, just let the kids play. You would think that Holton, being a junior, uh, this is his third year of playing, that he would know that. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not being critical. I'm just making a statement. That's what I would do, and I'm sure that uh, Coach Houston thinks about it. He would make a comment, too, to – you know, don't snap the dang ball when you got a big lead with 20 seconds on the clock. All right. Thank you, Mike. 317-1250. Let's go to Mitchell in Winston-Salem. Hey, Mitchell. Hey, guys. I uh, ha- Has there been anybody complaining about how many points we get up in, in, in the second half because I haven't had a chance to listen to the show? Um, not really. Not quite. Good, good. Cause Other than Rick crazy. Smith, def- oh, a former defensive coordinator, he's been angry about it. Yeah, third quarter we only gave up. You know, we gave up three touchdowns. He's not happy about it, Mitchell. Second well, half, second got- half of the game, we gave up four touchdowns and a field goal. <laughs> right, but this is this is not a day to be upset. This is a day to to enjoy a victory over a seven win team. That that if there are bowl games, is going to a bowl game and that has been ranked in the top twenty five at least two or three weeks this year. This was. This was kind of a watershed victory for our our team because that may have been the best first half that we've ever played ever. It's against a good a good team, and uh, this is this is a day to 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 just say, man, what a great way to, you know to end the end the year. I, I don't I don't think yeah you would love to not give up thirty one points in a in a half and only score seven, but. Think about what we did in the in the first half. We scored forty two points and in, in, in only gave up seven to them. So we had a perfect first half and an imperfect second half, but still won the game by two touchdowns. And we're we're playing now like we can beat almost anybody because we we beat Tulsa. Basically, we we could have easily beaten Navy. We did beat South Florida. We did beat Temple, although that they were wounded. Now we've beaten SMU. So had this been a regular season, we probably would have beaten um, Norfolk State, and I, I don't think we would have beaten Marshall, and it would have been questionable against South Carolina. So we we could have either been five and seven or six and six had COVID not not struck. So that is is good progression from where where we've been, and if now we. The thing we need to get is consistency. If we can get some consistency, then I, I, I think we're going to be able to play with anybody. When we struggle is when Holton struggles. 
And when we do well is when Halton does well. So that's that's what we've got to work on is consistency out of our quarterback. All right, Mitchell. Appreciate the call, man. Thanks for tuning in, as always, from Winston-Salem today. Yeah, got to be more consistent. And uh, one thing we did find in 2020 is a running game and some running backs. And unfortunately, Rajay Harris couldn't go today. He was on the sideline. But Keaton Mitchell really ended the year with a bang. A 100-yard game last week, a couple of scores today. And uh, that's Mike Houston football. He wants to be able to run the ball. And when both of them are clicking, like we saw today, like we saw against South Florida, like we saw against Tulsa, it makes for a pretty game offensively. Uh, we didn't see it enough this year, but we saw it enough, Coach, to to give you some hope that maybe next year it can be consistent week in, week out. Well, like we've talked about, you know, the last month, in recruiting, you know, East Carolina, you know, before Coach got here, we really – fell off in recruiting offensive linemen. I mean, you know, defensive linemen, you can find the six foot four guy that, that might be undersized at two fifteen, but you know, you he's gonna play at two forty five, two fifty five. But it's just hard to find those six foot four kids that, that weigh three hundred pounds. There's not enough of them to go around. And I don't think we started but two seniors on the offensive line this year. Uh, Montgomery did a terrible job and I'm not talking about him as a person. He did a terrible job as a head coach recruiting offensive linemen and defensive linemen. And when Coach got here, Coach Houston got here, I'm telling you, uh, just talking with Coach Shankweiler, who I coached with for seven or eight years, he could not believe where our offensive line was as far as enough guys that could play. And... uh, they're hard to find that was before all the issues happened this year right when you talk to him when you lose all the the guys due to not playing football anymore injury uh discipline i mean just a a, a comedy of errors uh there at the o-line position but credit to those guys credit to shane credit to those players that that patchwork offensive line uh got them through this year coach again all the years i recruited the toughest thing to find is offensive lineman. You can build a defensive lineman. If you can find a 6'3 kid that weighs 210, 215, you figure in two years he's going to be 250, 260. But to find an offensive lineman that's six foot four that weighs 220, he's never going to be 320 on the offensive line. So find an offensive lineman that, that have height, that you can put weight on, that can move their feet, they are the hardest thing to find and i'm i know one year we were supposed to uh, montgomery's first year we were supposed to sign seven and i we signed two the next year we're supposed to sign five and we signed one and i promise you when coach houston took this job and shank started counting offensive linemen on scholarship we only had about 12 and you should have at least 17 to 20 offensive linemen and they're still behind in that area, and they're going to they're going to hit offensive linemen again real hard this year in recruiting. I don't know how recruiting is going to be, you know, with this virus going on. How do you, you know, what do the, what can the coaches do? Yeah, you know, as far as recruiting goes. You know, you mentioned it earlier. We've had uh, plenty of success this year uh, running the football, and it's been shocking to us because it's something that we haven't seen in the past years. What's more shocking is that it was behind a depleted offensive line almost all year. Yeah. Almost every game they were switching guys up and doing all that. And like you said, Clip, uh, tip of the cap to Coach Shank, uh, coaching the O-lineman. And, uh, you know, un- unfortunately we were not able to see Rajay Harris today, but don't worry, we'll – see plenty of him coming up in the future it was great to see Darius Penix uh, yeah. in the game today yeah, it was. Uh, in, in third and short situations and he got a touchdown and and we should be blessed as a pirate nation that he has chosen to come back next year yeah I, I like it uh, last week it was Bruce Bivens an older guy who stepped up had a big ball game today uh, Darius Penix uh, we needed him and he came through and coach sometimes it's I, I don't know I don't know what it's like for guys to be in a program when a new head coach takes over and and starts bringing in his own guys, you can get lost in the shuffle. Good to see those guys really stick with it and be an important part of this team. Well, again, uh, getting to Darius, he, he was from my recruiting area, which was the Greensboro area. I had that area when I was here with Skip for five years, and when I came back here, 
Donnie Kirkpatrick was the offensive, and he gave it back to me. So I had it another four years. So I recruited that area for nine years. And the coach that he had, his high school coach, I guarantee you, uh, he has talked to Darius. And he's just a great guy. And he told Darius, you know, you be patient. You made a decision to go to East Carolina. You stay at East Carolina, and you make it work out. You do the work. You do what you're supposed to do, and you'll be successful there. Uh, you can't get mad and blame the coaches for your mishaps and transfer. And I think the high school coach, you know, saved his career here. And, you know, he's a heck of a person and a great kid. Had and some he's losses. A very, very good player. I mean, I know he's had some family. Had some issues this some year, issues. yeah. I can't remember who it was As, that passed yeah. away, but. Uh, I'm glad to see him here. Uh, he is a good kid uh, who's a grown man. Yeah. You know? He was a grown man when he came in yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> he was. And uh, happy for him. I'm really glad that, that he's going to stay. We were talking pregame with Jeff Charles. Every good team ECU faces now, Coach, has a a stable of two, more like three or four, solid running backs that they use. And the, the feature back is kind of a thing of the past, the, the one guy. Yeah. And uh, ECU putting together uh, something similar to that with Harris, Mitchell, Penix. Uh, it looks like uh, Coach Houston's going to bring in a couple more and, and stock that backfield for the Pirates. Well, what we, you know, I don't know how his court, how his recruiting numbers are, but uh, most head coaches that I've been with uh, they would have five running backs on scholarship, five tailbacks on scholarship. You know, when each position had numbers, like in the secondary, I got 18, you know. Uh, but tailbacks, it was some coaches would have six and some five. Uh, and because that position gets beat up so much and injuries you need, whereas at corner, I got, I had four corners. That was it. You know, and the rest of them were walk ons, and I got like, seven safeties because the safeties have to be more physical you know sometimes they walk down and play like a linebacker but each position has a number of scholarship players like the o-line i know shanks probably got 17 or 18 that he can have on scholarship for the offensive line which is basically three deep at each position and four deep maybe at tackle and one guard but uh Every coach is a little different on his numbers. 317-1250. If you want to jump in, got a question for Coach Smith or comment on today's game or today's season, give us a call. 317-1250. We'll be back with more of your calls on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show after this. The holiday season is here, and Sam Jones Barbecue is ready to help you host all of your family and friends this year with our catering menu, perfect for any size gathering. Our whole hog chop barbecue, slow-cooked chicken, smoked turkey, and spare ribs will make a holiday meal a hands-down winner every time. Log on to samjonesbarbecue.com to get your order started, and also check out our online store stocked with our sauces, hats, and t-shirts. I'm Sam Jones, and on behalf of all of our staff, happy holidays. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! Don't miss the huge savings this weekend at UBE and PirateWear.com. On Black Friday, get a free ECU t-shirt with any $50 purchase in store or on PirateWear.com. Plus 20% off all sweats on PirateWear.com. For Small Business Saturday, you get a free mini pirate sunset print with any in-store purchase at UBE. And on Cyber Monday, go to PirateWear.com for 20% off your entire online purchase. UBE and PirateWear.com. Proud to serve the Pirate Nation for over 50 years. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started. 
at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some parties at Bells Fork. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients from our toppings bars or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. In studio with Dr. Shondell Jones today from Kinetic Physical Therapy. What's new for 2021? Well, you know, 2020 has been a tough year for a lot of people, especially with the pandemic. And so, listen, we've got a way that people can kind of get that control back. We call it a power up package to start the year. And it's a mix of health coaching and personal training so that people can actually meet those goals and get back in shape. So to meet your goals in 2021, go to kptonline.com or give us a call at Kinetic Physical Therapy and Wellness at 364 364- Two eight zero six. This is Brian Packard, ECU former baseballer. You're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, uh, it is halftime, and Coastal Carolina has a comfortable 35-7 lead over Texas State. Louisiana cruising over Louisiana Monroe, 48-14 in the second quarter. Clemson beating up on Pittsburgh, 31-0 in the second. App State leads Troy, 31-3. Northwestern is trailing Michigan State 17-3 in the second quarter. Alabama has a 14-3 lead over Auburn. It's Louisville 3, Boston College 7. Ole Miss leads Mississippi State 14-0, and Rutgers is trailing Purdue by a point, 7-6 in the first quarter. College basketball games going on right now. Army, West Point, and Buffalo are tied at 74 with less than two minutes to go in that game. Navy leading Mount St. Mary 60-51 in the second half. George Mason leads Howard 79-56 in the half, and St. Louis has a 65-60 lead over LSU with about three minutes to go in that game. And that is a look at your scoreboard. Now let's head back in to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Clip Brock. All right, Mac Jones is slinging it in the Iron Bowl. Alabama just tagged on another touchdown up 21-3 on Auburn as they are taking it to the Tigers right now just cannot be stopped on offense 317-1250 the number on the fixed nc live line we got coach rick smith here if you got a question about the game or the season you can give us a call 317-1250 uh surely is this a new caller mike in durham mike how you doing hey i'm doing great um listen to jeff charles on the radio and watch it you know obviously on tv when they when he had that fumble or that or he tried to pass in the end zone, what the TV people said, or Jeff Charles and um, Kevin Monroe, he said, since they didn't call um, intentional grounding, it's not a reviewable call in case everybody missed it. But I thought it was a fumble myself, and I thought it should have been a touchdown because he just flipped it all of a sudden. Obviously, we all saw it on TV. I couldn't be there. But um, I guess it happened so quick that the refs couldn't call it, but they should have called it. And like y'all said, they missed it. Another one they missed. Uh, seems like an ongoing thing, but anyway, we'll give them a break since um, pandemic's going on. But um, it, they said, you know, they would be able to review it if, if it was called intentional grinding, but it, since they didn't call it, they couldn't review it, so it was another BS. But uh, one thing I want to point out, and I thought um, Ricky Prohl's son or whatever his name is, Prohl, he had a great game. So it's been a couple games since he caught passes or scored, so... All the hard work he put in this year, I thought it was great that he had three, four big catches and a few touchdowns because um, 
you know, he hasn't been getting the ball the past good games. I thought that was a highlight today. And another thing is um, I was very happy to see that Dr. Mitchison got recognized at halftime for leading us through this pandemic. And um, I saw it on social media and everything. So he's happy for his family and everything. Because uh, Dr. Ron has done a great job for us. And um, I wish we had a couple more games where we can keep it rolling. But it's a year that it is. And I uh, was happy for the Pirates victory today. And um, y'all's show, uh, talking about all the um, defensive calls and things like that and the perspective from the coach and you two uh, clip. So, anyway, I'll take it off there and just listen to y'all's comments. Thanks. All right, Mike. Appreciate it, man. Uh, his name is Blake Pro, and Blake Pro did have a fantastic game. Pirates, uh, as you said, Donnie Kirkpatrick, he called a good game. They dipped into the bag of tricks today, too, Coach, and we saw the uh, the reverse pass, Tyler yeah. Sneed throwing the football, and a uh, lot of new looks today here on the final game of the season. Yeah, that was a great play. There wasn't anybody within 15 yards of the wide receiver that caught the ball. <laughs> yeah. Reverse pass. Old Donnie. <laughs> got him. Uh, got him on that one. 317-1250. Let's go to a Semper Fi Pirate in Greenville. Hello. Hey. Uh, congratulations to the Pirates on a great win. Uh, we haven't been screwed. We've been four and five. But that's the way life goes. Uh, question for the coach. Did we do something different on offense, or did they do something different on defense in the second half and the same thing the other way. Were they doing different things on offense that we didn't pick up? And or why was there that big turnaround from the first half to the second half, both offensively and defensively? Uh, that's all I needed. All right. Thank you. Well, I know defensively he changed his front up a little bit. He went from three down to four down, and he brought five instead of four on the quarterback some took us a while to adjust to that uh defensively uh i think their kids just played harder in the third quarter i i didn't see anything different a little hungrier when you're down by that much than when you're up by that much. he uh he brought he brought five which made everybody on the offensive line one-on-one against you know against the defensive guy which sometimes you know you you figure if you're bringing one more than they can block somebody's going to be free that hurt us a little bit and then we started keeping the back end some to chip block in the tight end which helped i hope that answered his question appreciate the call and uh and you know not to i know coach smith is, is upset with how much the defense gave up in the second half but smu gets over 500 yards a game scores a ton of points they were it was going to happen at some point they were going to get it going now you didn't want them to get it going that much yeah. but they woke up a little bit there in the second half and, and came to life and our offense which had those long drives you talked about in the yeah. first half responded they uh our offense gave them some opportunities there in the second half that uh that they didn't there in the first half so we had some long you know drives we had how about the fake punt we haven't even talked about that one yet from luke larson <laughs> they just rolled him out and the big fella rumbled down the field that was a heck of a call too uh let's go to a bubba uh he used to be a bubba he's lost a lot of weight now but brian bailey still considers himself a bubba how about our bubba punter running the ball down the field today bailey that was a, a great play yeah, how about uh, through 36 years of doing this, I've never gotten sh- shushed in the press box, and everybody started yelling at me about the fake punt. <laughs> That's the way you run a fake punt, Bailey. Cowboys can't run a fake punt. So and Tom McClellan's like, calm down, people, calm down. So, oh, I hate I missed that. I hate I missed that one. That's good. That's how you do well, it, Mike getting McCarthy. In the press box, getting it on Twitter, getting it everywhere. Bailey, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier, and during the pregame show, you, you said that going into the final game last year against Tulsa, Donnie Kirkpatrick told you, I guess this week, that he had a feeling the guys just weren't into it and were going through the motions and everything leading up to the game. You said on the pregame this morning that it was a different story this year. And, man, you weren't lying. There must be something to that because the Pirates came out on fire and uh, took it to the Mustangs. 
Yeah, and that's the, that's the offense we wanted to see all year. I mean, they just they just really took the war right to them, and they kept taking it and kept taking it. I think if they hadn't had a halftime break, they might have put a hundred on them. I think that break really hurt them because I think they came out, at least from what I could see, it almost like they came out, you know, wanting to play not to lose rather than playing to win. And sometimes that happens, especially with a young football team. But uh, I, I just thought the offense, I mean, they just really clicked. Holton was on fire. He missed his first pass attempt, and then after that he went through. It just seemed like every one he was completing, there were big gains. I mean, they just had control of everything. And I was really impressed. The running game was there. And uh, that was I, that, that's the biggest win of the Mike Houston era so far, and I hope it's the first of many wins in the American. Bailey, you almost wish now. Uh, we were saying on the pregame, or I was, and I'm going to put words in your mouth, that – yeah, I was kind of glad to go ahead and get this season over with, not schedule any more games. Now I want to see another opponent next week. I want yeah, to. I want to the same thing. <laughs> keep this thing rolling. Uh, Pirates two wins in a row to wrap up twenty twenty. Uh, what What did Mike Houston have to say after the game today, Bailey? That got your attention. Well, that's what. That's one of the questions I ask him. I said, Coach, it's not too late. People are still looking for games. You want to play another one? And he laughed, but he said, "Yeah, you know, this kind of ended up, you know, about as good as it could." You know, through all the COVID and all the problems and all the issues every week, and you know, you ended on a two-game winning streak inside the conference. I mean, three wins doesn't sound like a whole lot in conference play, but it's a whole lot right now for East Carolina, and I think that he's really happy with that. He says he is concerned because they're going to lose the players now for about six weeks, but they've got a plan, you know, because the players will go home, the semester's over, and they've got a plan to try to, you know, keep everybody in shape. And as I was talking about it earlier with some people, you don't want to come back in mid-January to Big John and not be in some kind of shape, <laughs> or, or you're just not going to make it out there. So I think they've got a plan for that. And I really think that the winter conditioning and the spring football is going to really mean a lot for this program. And they've got some momentum now. I mean, everybody's fired up. If you want to borrow money in Greenville, North Carolina, Bundy's the day to do it. And after a big power win, no doubt about that. Coach Smith, you can speak to what Bailey's talking about there. ECU going to send their players home for six weeks, and that's a long time. That's a lot of Christmas cakes and Christmas goodies that they can eat, and uh, you got to stay on them as a coach, right, when they're away? I would assure you that the head coach – there'll be a meeting tomorrow. The head coach will meet with the <laughs> staff. They'll look at the film, and the coaches will probably be instructed to call their players at least two times a week on the phone – and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Because an offensive lineman can go home weighing 300 pounds and come back at 350, you know, in nine weeks. Uh, Sounds like what I do during Christmas break, Bailey. Yep. Hey, I'm telling you, and that's happened already when the pandemic hit. Yep. I mean, there's a couple of players that, that were not factors at all for East Carolina this whole year because they ate themselves out of, you know, being able to play any. And, and that's, that's a shame, but, I mean, you know, these guys get home, and if they don't do the work and, and aren't disciplined, and it's hard to do that when, you know, mama's giving you all this stuff. And, yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw it a couple of instances during the year that that happened, and that's going to be, you know, a big concern. But hopefully they get them back in mid-January, start working. And I, I just think, you know, winning a game like this is going to pay big dividends. It goes into recruiting. It goes into, you know, getting a start on 2021. And, and Coach Houston even talked about it in our post game. He said, "Hey, we got to get a vaccine. We got to get back to normal, and we got to get this place rocking again." And I, I agree. With him. <clears throat> and Bailey uh, mentioned this. Stephen Igo put out the names that were honored for Senior Day for their final game as an ECU Pirate. I think most notably on that list was Chris Willis, but there was a lot of names missing from that list uh, that are seniors on this team. Darius Penix, Bruce Bivens, to name a couple. So as far as you know, was Mike Houston asked about that at all in the post game about guys coming back, or is that still uh, you know to be determined? Well, what he told me last week was that he went to every one of the seniors and invited them to walk, and he even told them, he said, you know, if you want to still come back, you can, but if you want to walk and, and, and make your decision later on or whatever, but he said to a man, the only seven that wanted to walk are seven that aren't going to be playing next year, and everybody else plans on coming back. So that's that's another, you know, big big thing for East Carolina to yeah. get those guys some more experience and, and have, you know, because this is a young football team, but it, it's, a, it's not as young as it was, is it? Hey, getting older by the game, Coach, yeah. and next year, uh, Coach Rick Smith loves to look at who's experienced, who's not. Next year, ECU's going to be that experienced team yeah. that you talk about every week. 
and we'll have we'll have the guys that have been to war yes sir yeah. Bailey. Joe Dooley says it. Joe Dooley says it. You got to get old and stay old. Get old and stay old. Uh, Bailey, you're going to be talking talking some hoops on Monday at noon, right, on the Brian Bailey Show? Yes, we will. Coach Rock, Steve Rockport's going to join us. We'll talk about the uh, Pirates and uh, the big win over Charlotte. And the word is that the Pirates will be playing again early this week, but I have not Mm. found out who the opponent is yet. I do think that there will be a game coming up very shortly very good news i hope you're right on that one bailey i know you're in contact with joe dooley making the schedule for him so we appreciate yeah, yeah, it yeah i don't think it'll be duke <laughs> <laughs> bailey tried to get duke on the schedule joe dooley wasn't too interested in that one so uh, like we haven't talked to them no we haven't talked to them bailey uh appreciate it man thanks for joining us all year long on the bud light pregame tailgate this program as well and we'll uh, see you on monday sounds good thank you all right, Double B, Brian Bailey there on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Let's take a timeout, come back, and we'll take more of your calls. We have open open lines if you want to jump in. Shirley, I, I'm sorry. I, if you want to cut me off and take over, please do. 317-1250. We're back with you after this. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dog's two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs, and more. Warren's in Greenville, across from Ron Ayers Motorsports, and in Chocowinity, next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs, Want some? Get some. North Carolina State Parks are now open for visitors. Parks should be used for exercise, fresh air, getting out in nature, or a day trip as the state safely reopens. Visitors should enjoy themselves, but please remember the three W's. Wear face coverings, wait six feet apart, and wash your hands often. Focus on moving through the park, keep social distancing in mind, and avoid large groups. While most facilities and activities will be open, please contact any state park before your visit with questions or visit ncparks.gov for forward slash open. If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Do you think you might have been exposed to COVID-19? Maybe you're planning to visit parents, family, or friends. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Vidant Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Bostick Sug Furniture is overstacked and overstocked. Overflowing inventory means clear out prices. Hurry in and take advantage of the biggest and best deals throughout our showroom. Save up to 20% off the best furniture brands. Lazy Boy, Bassett, Kincaid, Rowe, and Ristonic Mattresses. Plus, just for this sale, 12 months special financing or choose 48 months special financing. There's savings on top of savings. We're overstacked and overstocked. And that means big savings for you at Bostick Sug Furniture. The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. Hey, Pirate fans, get ready for a winning season and get things done right with the John Deere Tractor Package from Quality Equipment. You can't afford to lose on your home turf, so we'll help you get the driveway done right at the right price. Right now, our 1023E driveway package starts as low as $148 per month. So get quality done right before every ECU football weekend. Visit qualityequip.com. Offer ends 12-31-2020. Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. 
This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Cliff Brock. Back with you on the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Call-In Show. About a 52-38 to ECU victory to wrap up 2020. We're taking your calls on the Fixed NC Live line. Still enjoying some Parker's Barbecue from the pregame show as they gave us some sandwiches and uh, some chicken sandwiches as well. You can go to Parker's, one of the three locations, or go to parkersbbq.com. Uh, you can order the chicken, barbecue, seafood, sides. Uh, they can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Stop by Parker's or go to parkersbbq.com. Ask about their delivery options uh, at Parker's Barbecue. All right, uh, 317-1250. I have a couple open lines. If you want to ask a question to Coach Smith, you can do so right now. 317-1250. Collins, hang on. Let's go to Reed in Greenville. Hey, Reed. Hey, Clip. Happy Thanksgiving and cheers, John. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Reed. How you doing, man? Uh, man, it's it. It was crazy, and they kind of gave me a few more gray hairs in the second half on defense. But it's going to be a short and sweet one. So the first one, I got to I got to break it out for the last game of the season. The first one, Clip and Coach, is for the defense. I. Still don't quite get the uh, how that was a somehow a pass this this gentleman did in the end zone where it should have been a touchdown for us, but that's just me on mine. And the second one, and thank you, Mike Durham. This is a good dude, actually. I know that guy. For and thank you, ECU, for honoring what my father-in-law Ron Mitchell has done for this university since he came here, and especially since. He's guided us through this. So this is for my Paul in law. And gentlemen, all I just want to say is happy Thanksgiving. Cheers. I'll take it off the air. I hope everything's good. Later, boys. All right. Thank you. Reed's got some chugging to do now. He just cracked two cold ones uh <laughs> for the pirates today. And uh man, it's great to hear Reed do that. He was a uh a regular back in the day when we were winning ball games and he was cracking them left and right after uh wins back in the day, coach. And good to hear him cracking some again for the defense and for uh Dr. Ron Mitchelson, Paul in law. I didn't know that connection. That's interesting. All right, thank you, Reed. Three one seven twelve fifty. Let's go to Collins. In Lake Wiley, is that right, Shirley? South Carolina. Hey, Collins. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to call in after a game like that. Uh, Clip, I know you've got to be over the moon this week with all the wins you've got. Yeah, all my teams. Have... All my teams do is win. All of a sudden, I got Washington, got ECU basketball, Pirate football. I'm, I'm a winner. All of a sudden. Well, it's good. We needed that for you, Clip. We we like it to see you see you happy and see you on Twitter doing everything you do and. Uh, everything you guys do it here at Pirate Radio. I do have a question for Coach. Um, everybody's talked about building off the uh, two wins to end the season for next year's team, but uh, as a coach, how do you start building off games like this in the off season? How do you start building, I guess, the positives into what you do for the uh, upcoming year? Well, the f- first thing is you just remind those kids how they felt after all those losses and how they felt after the wins. And... Uh, you know, there's nothing. Nothing is worse than losing a football game. I mean, if you're a player or a coach, I mean, uh, I know for me, you know, I know Coach <laughs> Coach Holf used to tell us, "Y'all got to get over it." You know, that first year we were here, uh, but it was hard for grown men to put that behind you. You know, by Monday, and I can imagine how it was. You know, for those kids. But you have to, when you win, that feels great. Enjoy it for 24 hours and put it behind you. When you lose, you know, feel sorry for yourself for 24 hours and then put it behind you. Tomorrow's a new day, and you just got to go out there and, you know, start over. But I think it was a great win for us, even though we, you know, we got our butts kicked the second half. We only scored 10 the second half, and they scored 28. Uh you know, 28 to 10 the second half, that ain't good enough. And then, of course, the first half, we know we kicked their butt 42 to 7. 
but uh you know i was beginning to worry when we only had a 14 point lead <laughs> <laughs> collins anything else Oh, uh, nothing else. Thank you guys for all you guys do here at Pirate Radio, making it easy for uh, this South Carolina Pirate fan out here being able to listen each and every week. So thank you guys for all you do. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Collins. Appreciate you tuning in today. 317-1250. We have open lines if you want to jump in. Uh, Stephen Igo just tweeted this out. Uh, he said a couple of notes on ECU's win today. It's the first over any team with a winning record since NC State in 2016. The first over an AAC team that finished the season with a winning record since entering the league. It's the first win to close the season since 2013. And it's back-to-back wins over FBS teams for the first time since 2015. So a lot of firsts took place today. Yeah, a lot of them since Rick Smith was coaching on the team. So, uh, yeah. Coach, uh, finally good to... To get you out of those record books and get this team into the record books. And once again, somebody had asked the first time ECU's won back to back games to end a season. All you gotta go all the way back to two thousand seven where you guys ended that one in Hawaii. Yeah. That was boy, that was a great trip. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> a good football game too. Yeah. Uh, but the trip as a whole, I'm sure, was a lot of fun for you. All right, uh, we got our, our Brown and Wood drive of the game and we got Mike Houston comments coming up on the other side. 317-1250. If you want to jump in, you still got plenty of time. We are back with more on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show after this. This holiday season, get the perfect stocking stuffer from our friends at Sawyer's Fun Park. If you purchase a Sawyer's gift card now, they'll add bonus bucks to it. Here's how it works. Buy a $20 card, get $10 added on. Buy a $40 gift card, and you get $20 added on. If you buy a $60 gift card, you get $30 added on. Or if you buy a $100 gift card, you get $50 added to that card. It's bonus bucks. Going on now, only at Sawyer's Fun Park on Quarry Road in Winter. It's bow time. The barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait, Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. <clears throat> We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto. It's bow time. Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP of Eastern North Carolina. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! Love Jersey Mike subs? Love them times 12 with our new catering box. Packed full of a dozen individually wrapped subs. They're yours for the sharing. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Pirate Radio. You know, I think this is a pretty blue-collar, tough, hard-nosed fan base, and that's the way our teams are going to be. The voice of the Pirate Nation. (laughs) 
You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, still got time for your questions and comments. If you want to drop a question to Coach Rick Smith, you can do so. 317-1250. We have a couple open lines. We have Leonard up in Greenville. So this is the same Leonard that used to call in a lot back in the day. Hadn't heard from him in a while. Leonard, how you doing? I'm risen from the dead after this win, so I thought I would call in. Yes, it's been a while. Uh, still listen to the show, um, but just haven't called in a while. Uh, two wins in a row to end the season is great. Uh, thought the offense played really well the first half. Uh, defense came through in the second half. Uh, one play I wanted to point out, I don't think I've heard anybody, is when I think his name is Jaira Wilson, just basically took the ball right out of the guy's hand. It wasn't that he was fumbling. He just took the ball out of his hand. So uh, I thought that was one of the best defensive plays of the game, as well as the two interceptions towards the end. Um, Just saw a lot of improvement this year. Uh, Hopefully everybody will still be patient. I think um, there's a lot of good things to come. Hopefully that we'll get a spring in that'll help guys improve even more, uh, get bigger, stronger. Um, and I appreciate, uh, coach, all you said, I listen a lot to what you said. Uh, and I think the line has improved a lot, but that's one area that I think, you know, you pointed out that they've got to get more guys in. Um, luckily we've been able to patchwork that together with all the injuries and stuff this year. Um, but hopefully that'll improve. We've got some, Great young guys. Um, I think that everybody's seen this year that, you know, they're only going to get better. So hopefully we'll have an even better year next year. Uh, We'll get a full season in, full spring. Um, Thank you guys for all you've done uh, this year and uh, all the commentary. And hopefully we'll have a great basketball season to look forward to as well. Uh, So I think that's all I'm going to say. Go Pirates. All right. Thank you, Leonard. And yeah, that's your guy, Chandler, Jaira Wilson, making a play, making a strip, and uh, and getting the ball. Yeah, that was a like a grown man play, as (laughs) Coach Ruff would say. Um, But yeah, just literally, it was. uh, And with the broadcast today, the the camera work was not all that great. Um, You can't expect much from ESPN Plus. But all of a sudden, I just saw everybody kind of running one way. (laughs) And then they pan over, and there's Jair Wilson running with the football down the uh, 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 going the other way. And unfortunately, he got caught. He he doesn't have the most speed on the on on the field. But uh, Jair Wilson really has made a name for himself this year for the Pirates. He's been all over the football field, making tackles, stripping the ball. And I think that's really what he he's known for is is stripping the football. And at Tulsa, I think he had two, potentially three. Three should have had the th- game winner. Yeah. Should have yeah. had that third one uh, that didn't get over uh, or overturned, which it did get overturned. But uh, yeah, so uh, a big play there from Jair Wilson. And I also think that this is a, uh, you know, there's signs where your program's changing. You know, this is a big win, a big program changing win. Uh, but when you're getting, you know, regulars on the fifth quarter Colin show calling back after <laughs> some years, that's Reed a good sign. And Leonard, this is kind of a blast from the past, back to the winning days. It's good to hear. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, all the new folks calling in as well. All right, 317 1250. John is up in Kitty Hawk. Hey, John. Hey, guys. Uh, Good afternoon. A uh, great day, obviously. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say what a great show you you guys have, and we're very fortunate as Pirate fans to have the show that you do. Uh, I think it's better than any possible ones in college football or whatever. But uh, it, it's a big part of being a Pirate Nation, and I compliment you on that. Thank you, John. Uh, as far as the game, it, it certainly was a great game, and there were a lot of positive things that happened. And we had a few hiccups, but uh, my thought was, you know, we'll be able to learn a lot from this game uh, going forward. And so the little hiccups we can take care of. And uh, the offensive coordinator, as as the coach said, Smith, uh did a great job, but it, it was a big win, and uh, it was very nice to see that. Uh, I know we had six players that did not suit up. Uh, 
two of them, uh, one in the running back room, were disciplined for this game. Uh, but I like that because the coach is a type that you do it right or you don't do it. And uh, I was somewhat encouraged by that. Uh, to make a long story short, I, the offensive line, I thought, has just really improved. And they're very young, and some of them are not up to the weight that they should be. But Ailer's had uh, a lot of time on most of the plays. And if you give him a lot of time and you have Snead and running around out there, uh, it's going to be a problem for the uh, defense. Uh, it's it's kind of like Coach Houston said one time, you, you, uh, you can't cover him in a phone booth. I mean, he's just an outstanding player. Not just to single him out, but the, the announcers were so funny later in the game. They said, well, you know, you could put him anywhere. Put him on defense. And one guy said, yeah, I'd like to see him at uh, nose, guard, nose tackle. So it, it was funny and it was a great game. And uh, we have some really promising young guys. And I'm glad that we ended up this way. And I'll tell you a quick story down being Thanksgiving and so forth. All my family was down here in Kitty Hall, and uh, my grandsons are uh, five and three, and they insisted on going to the game. So my son and daughter in law took off because the kids said, We, we want to see the game in person. And, uh, they are big a pirate fan as I am or anyone else, and they just really enjoy it. And give a shout out if you don't mind to Boone and Jackson, and they they enjoyed the game according to my son. But anyway, I'll get off the phone. But I really appreciate the show and uh, look forward to next year. All right, John, Boone and Jackson picked a good game to go to today uh, to wrap up the 2020 season, uh, seeing that product on the field, and that's what we want to see more of uh, moving forward. Uh, great win for the Pirates today, 52-38, to 38, and it's going to be a tough call to decide today's Brown and Wood Drive of the Game, brought to you by Brown and Wood, serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for over 83 years. Brown and Wood has four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal that you leave a happy customer customer every time brown and wood on greenville boulevard greenville online at brown and coach you got all the drives there uh for ecu today and there was some long ones and uh they ended with touchdowns there in the first half did any one of them stand out to you well to me the first one yeah it was 10 plays 80 yards touchdown we set the tone of the game right there you know and that, that was the fake punt yeah that first series uh it was fourth down and eight and I think I got up to get, get a glass of water or a beer or something. And I, about the time I turned around, he he took off, and I said, "Man!" And uh, of course, they went on down. And uh, after the fake punt, it was for over twenty yards. And then they had a fifteen-yard run, an eleven-yard run, and a nine-yard run. You know, to to score that first touchdown. But the first six times. The first six times we got the ball, we scored. We, Man. You know, I went over that with you earlier. Yeah. And then the seventh play, you know, with six plays and a field goal. So, you know, the first seven times our offense went on the field, they got points, which uh, that's that's very tough for the opposing defense to overcome. And ECU was aggressive there at the end of the half to get that field goal. Yeah. They were trying to move the ball downfield, yeah. get some more points on the board. There's been times this year, guys, that – we didn't have much to choose from. In the first half alone, we had six drives that we could choose from <laughs> yeah. for our Brown and Wood drive of the yeah. game. But, you know, I saw uh, Steve and I go put it up there on Twitter and also Ronnie Woodward. But, you know, that fake punt really is what ignited this team today. Yeah. And it's really – it showed that the Pirates were here not only to play but to win the football game. And so I think that had a lot to do with the success of this football team today. So – um, but yeah, and it, you know, I, it was shocking to see that early in the game. But it's like I said just earlier. Yeah, I think that just showed them, hey, we're here to play some football, and we're also here to win this football game. And I don't know if it was asked after the game if that was a 
we're fake punting here or if that was a larson you know if you got this certain look right. you take off because he has been getting the snap rolling to the right and kicking it away and everybody just went downfield and he had tons of open yardage so either way it was a great call yeah it was uh by the uh the either football by team. the coaching staff or by the punter yes sir either he's, way he's got some speed the hefty uh the hefty yeah. guy all right, uh, let's take our final time out, Shirley Rhodes. And when we come back, we'll hear a little bit from Mike Houston. You got a little Mike Houston for us, Shirley? All right, we'll do that. And uh, get Rick Smith's final thoughts on the 2020 season. And we still have time for your calls if you want to jump in. 317-1250. We're back with you on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show after this. Hey, welcome to Jack Browns. What can I get you? Can I get a vodka soda with a lime, please? No liquor, just beer. We have beer out the wazoo. And we don't even know what a wazoo is. IPAs, sours, gozas, wheat, stouts, porters, you name it, we got it. Drink 100 beers and join the Notch Club. Don't Don't be a nerd. nerd. Ask about about the Notch Notch Club. Club. Yeah, we've got the best craft beer in Greenville. Awesome. I'll take it back to us light. You got it. On the way. Jack Brown's Beer and Burger Joint, located at 805 Dickinson Avenue, right in the heart of Uptown Greenville. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Bush, Bud Light Beer, and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-styled restaurant and bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and the best burgers around. Check out the spicy mahi risotto or the bourbon pecan salmon. Wednesday night is date night. Two salads, an appetizer, a bottle of wine, two entrees, and a dessert for just $55. Thursday is ladies' night with $5 martinis and special apps. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits. 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. The Rick House. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Classic sports moments never get old, and neither does classic food from CPW's. CPW's classic menu is back with all of your favorites like tortellini CPW's, Cajun chicken and pasta, classic lasagna, the garbage pizza, the stromboli, calzone, Atlantic salmon, the Cajun fried shrimp wrap, and more. Start every meal off with your favorite beverage and CPW's fresh baked bread and garlic butter. CPW's, serving classics in Greenville since 1995, Stanton Square near the hospital. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find any of those at U.S. Cellular because we do things differently. And that means you can get the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or Google Pixel 5 for free with no hidden requirements all season long. U.S. Cellular. Upgrade to fair. Terms and conditions apply. See store uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond on the call. This is Billy Weaver from WITN. You're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250, last call for your calls if you want to jump in. And uh, talk to Coach Smith, give your thoughts on the game and the 2020 ECU football season, which wrapped up today with a second straight W. Uh, 317-1250 is that number. And Shirley Rhodes, you got some Mike Houston comments uh, we can hear after this game? Yeah, just a quick one-minute comment from Coach, um, but I'm going to play it for you here. Okay, let's hear it. You know, 
we certainly made it a little interesting there in the second half. But and I was worried about that at halftime. But you know, just I, I don't want anything. You know, a couple of mistakes there by some 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 guys that let them you know almost get back in the ball game. But I certainly don't want to take that from what is just an incredibly impressive performance by our players. Um, you know, I, I've been waiting on this game. You know, it's I didn't know when it was going to happen. I thought it was happening at Tulsa. Uh, you know, you you almost maybe. Had it against Navy, but you've been waiting on that game where you finally just it felt like everything just flipped, and uh, you know it's 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 the daily commitment that our, our players have to doing all the things that they do, and it's uh, you know their attitude, their work ethic, uh, the the kind of teammates they are. It's just you know they're doing the they're doing things right consistently, uh, you know within the program and outside of the program, and you know you're starting to see those tangible results in the field, and just excited for them. Uh, that's a good football team we played. You know, they're going to go to a bowl game. Uh, you know, they've they've got you know a ton you know good resume this year, quality wins. Uh, but you know, certainly you know today was a great day to be a pirate. Great day to be a pirate, indeed. Mike Houston's just like us. He was waiting for this thing to click and to have one of these games. And uh, it's good that he uh, he thought it was coming and saw it coming, and then we finally got to witness it today. And a bit of a, a monkey off his back, Coach, because he's had a few wins here as a head coach, but not a, a signature win, not a, a win over a winning team like this. This was a big one for him today. Well, that's what you know. I was trying to – at the house, I guess it was last night, I was trying to figure out when was the last time we beat somebody that had a winning record. I knew that Montgomery did in the three years he was here. And Unless I, you count early in the year that state win. Yeah. But that's that was week two, so yeah. does that even count, you know? I mean it was just, just been Yeah. You know, and to 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 get this one the way we did, I meant the first half was a butt kick. And I was worried the second half because they scored twenty eight points. We only scored ten. Uh you know, and we're I guess it was like eight minutes to go in the game, and we were only up by, what, 10? 14. 14. They got it within, I think, yeah, 14. I'm sitting so. there thinking, I hope they don't score again. <laughs> <laughs> Made us a little nervous, but uh, but the Pirates take care of business today. All right, we got some uh, callers here. We got Bobby in West Palm Beach calling in. Hey, Bobby. Hey, guys. What a, what a great day after a, just an unbelievable first half. Uh, obviously, the Pirates were huge underdogs today. They came out to play, and if you you look at the SMU's team, man, they, they had some great athletes out there, some some big guys, a lot of seniors like you talked about earlier on, uh, on the show today. Um, the guys just came out with a lot of heart the first half and just really did a fantastic job. And obviously to win two games to close the season is huge. And um, There's so much to be excited about in, in Pirate football uh, coming up in the next couple of years. And uh, just, just want to get your guys' thoughts on, you know, um, what – how this whole deal with the, um, you know, this year with 2020, COVID, um, certain guys are coming back, certain guys are staying. I mean, that could be a positive for us on some fronts. But also, if a lot of the other teams have their seniors, you know, stay around another year, could be kind of a, uh, it's like kind of like balance out. But I uh, just want to get you guys thoughts on how that's going to impact uh, 2021. And, uh, you know, certainly things are looking up for Pirate football. Love what Pirate Radio 1250 does. Thanks, thanks to you guys. And, you know, we're one know in basketball, too. So uh, a lot of good things happening in Pirate Athletics now. So uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, happy holiday. All right. Thank you, Bobby. Appreciate the call. One thing it's going to do for 2021 is just about every Rick Smith folder is going to have veteran teams on it because everybody's coming back, Coach. You know, what worries you, though, is less – you get 85 scholarships. I don't know how many seniors we have right off the top of my head, but let's say we got 15 seniors, which if they all graduate, you can go sign 15 guys. Well, if all 15 of them stay, you can't sign a soul. I believe you're kind of grandfathered in to those scholarships where you you get additional ones. So if you had 15 your- seniors and you went out and signed 15 kids and you'd have – a hundred on scholarship for that one year then it comes down to do you have enough money for those scholarships and what the ad wants to do and what exactly so those conversations have to be had as well but you can't you can't keep all those seniors and not go sign kids because it's going to kill you three years later right because when you don't have a class that year 
and some guys will see the writing on the wall and maybe want to move on there's going to be a the, this is going to be the craziest year for transfers it's almost going to be like free agency too yeah. coach with all these grad transfers and guys that can move on and play right away that's going to be interesting too i mean it's going to be interesting to see how the staffs handle this that you know these all these seniors get another year yeah because i mean it's going to affect how you recruit unless the ncaa allows you to be you know instead of having 85 on scholarship this one year they say well you can have 100 and then the next year you know you got a couple of years to get back to the 85 i don't know how they're going to do that and like you said it's going to have a domino effect too uh three four years from now yeah. the amount of players you got on your roster and exactly. everything so we're all going through it for the first time we'll see how it uh uh maybe you can jump in the uh, coach's office talk to donnie and shank <laughs> and see how they're gonna figure this whole thing out uh all right bill's up in greenville next hey bill hey clip how you doing good man uh great great win uh the team was really fired up and played really hard today it was just great to see all the emotion out there and um, the, the, my question is, I was watching the warm-ups, and I kept looking at, you know, number three running the ball, and there, there's Demetrius Money. And when y'all were talking about running backs coming back, he hadn't played all year, and he's going to be coming back. And he started, like, almost every game when he was a freshman, you know, last year. Well, he so, was the uh, team's leading rusher last year, Bill. So, yeah. Yeah. So he's he's another guy that's going to be back. So when Coach was talking about five running backs, that's the fourth one, you know, already. So that's a great thing, and he's a heck of a running back. So <clears throat> I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. And, uh, and the other thing about the scholarships, I know Cliff Godwin's going through that with baseball, but I think they, the seniors that come – come back don't count against your scholarship count because you know baseball is only like 12 11 and a half or 12 and a half scholarships but i don't think the seniors count against it i think they just get them they just give them an extra year yeah i, I believe, I believe basketball that. would be the same way it'd be every sport that makes sense that would be the only way that it would not affect you down the road mm-hmm. you know is those let's say we have 15 seniors this year at east carolina we go out and we sign 15 freshmen but we keep those 15 it put us at what 100 on scholarship and then those those guys are gone you know after yeah. a year well, that, that's the only way they can do it i think that's how they do it i mean for that one year you you're kind of grand like i said you're kind of grandfathered, grandfathered in, in like yeah. that but you can't like, penalize the teams for you know that's the rule. You got to have a way to you work around it. So, uh, I think I, that's what I heard about the baseball thing, and I'm sure it's the way it would for be, every yeah. sport. I appreciate and, you telling us that. <laughs> yeah, and, and one last thing. I, it was. All, it's always good. This is a little inside joke, but it's always good to hear an order the crow person calling in because uh, we're all old and we're. We used to get together every Friday for lunch at the Crow's Nest, so every now and then one of us would call in, and it was good to hear one do it. All right, Bill. Well, thank you, man. Right, man. Appreciate you tuning in. Have a good one. All right. Bye. The scholarship deal is kind of like getting paid under the table. You you're, you got a scholarship. It's just, you know, under the table. It's just, uh, not official, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, that is uh, that is uh, the case there. All right, 317-1250, last call for your calls if you want to jump in. John is up in Bethel. Hey, John. What's up, Cliff? How y'all doing? Good. How are you? Doing good. I'm just fired up about the win tonight. Um, Get to end on a two-game winning streak for the season. I'm looking forward to, hopefully, if COVID allows, getting to Charlotte next year for the opening kickoff against Appalachian State. Um, We'll see see what that holds, though. But um, just really just want to thank y'all for the coverage y'all provided this year, Uh, not only pre-game but post-game. Just in second and none, nobody else does a pre-game or post-game show like Pirate Radio. Um, I've been saying that for 17 seasons now, and it holds true every year. And just wanted to shout out to Coach Smith for um, just all the dedication he brings to the post-game show. Uh, for those who don't watch it, um, Coach Smith walks in every week 
with a literal briefcase <laughs> of notes every week. That's because I'm 73 and I can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe that for one second because I, I think I remember more than we forget in a week. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much. That means a lot to me, that comment. Uh, I mean, you, you've earned the right to, to sit back on the couch and enjoy beverage every week and just, you know, take the games in, but you're really a student of the game, and um, I just appreciate the knowledge that you bring every week to the table. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, bye up, y'all. Um, looking forward to next September. Let's just keep on building on the momentum. John, appreciate it, man. Thanks as always. That's uh, yeah. John and Bethel. John has grown up uh, with Pirate Radio and has uh, stuck with us through all the years. That was great to hear. Uh, and he's right. If, uh, if we can get to Charlotte... That's a big game, Coach. Looking ahead to 2021, here's ECU's schedule. They got Appalachian State in Charlotte. South Carolina finally scheduled to make the trip to Greenville in 2021. At Marshall, tough place to play. And Huntington and Charleston, Charleston Southern also on the schedule along with your conference game. So that's yeah. the 2021 non-conference slate for East Carolina. All right, uh, as we wrap it up, Coach, once again, I'll, I'll echo John. It's awesome to have you here with us every week and providing the coach's perspective on what we just saw. We appreciate that. Uh, final thoughts on this season. Man, it's great to end with a win, but, but yeah. what's your final take here? Well, I thought the kids really played well today. And, uh, you know, we're just so young. And next year, we're not going to be so young. So, yeah. you know, looking at the schedule, if we can start out, you know, I've often said that, you know, winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. And, you know, our kids, the program has been down now for, what is it, five years? Yes, sir. And, you know, five years of losing – uh, it's just hard to overcome. And bless the coaching staff's heart and those young men. Uh, these last two wins, you know, they can fall back on. It's going to carry over into the off season because winning is a hell of a lot more fun than losing. And they'll remember these two weeks, and hopefully we can start off next year and, you know, win that first one. You win that first one, that second one's, you know, kids think they can win that one too, so. You know, winning just breeds winning. Yes, sir. And, uh, Coach, once again, awesome to have you here on Saturdays. I'll let you and Troy and Jonathan work out the contract uh, deal and see if we can talk to you more on Pirate Radio Live, talk some football with you. Love to. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Coach. All season. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Shirley, Chandler, the fam, great working with you all year. We made it through another year without killing each other. We made it through another year of probably the, well, not probably, the strangest football year we've ever had in our lifetimes. That is true. We'll never forget this one. No. Good or bad or indifferent, we will not forget uh, 2020. That is faux show. Great job, guys. Enjoy uh, being with you guys each and every Saturday. And we'll be back with you coming up Monday on Pirate Radio Live at 3 o'clock. Don't forget the Brian Bailey Show at noon on Monday as we roll on. Treasure Chest opens up Tuesday. Tuesday. So that's a big day here on Pirate Radio Live as well. Thank you, folks, for calling in, being a part of the show, for chiming in on Facebook Live and on Twitter. We enjoy it, and I love interacting with the Pirate Nation. And very happy to sign off today with ECU's second straight victory. Winning is a habit. Pirates have a habit of winning as they head into 2021, yeah. Coach. Amen. 52 to 38, the final score today. For all the folks here at Pirate Radio, thanks to Parker's Barbecue for the awesome food as well. We will see you in 2021 on the Bud Light pregame tailgate and U.S. Cellular fifth quarter call in show. You have been listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call in show. Join us next time for complete postgame coverage of East Carolina football.